YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to try and do two things at once. I'm going to multitask, I'm going to talk to you and vlog while I'm in the kitchen chopping up some vegetables for dinner tonight because there's nothing quite like multitasking when you're trying to do a project when you don't actually have enough time to do the project. Here's one I prepared earlier. My problem with favourites is that you have to really be decisive and I'm a very indecisive person. I know that my favourite movie is The Lion King but that's just good timing in childhood brilliance. Um, I know that my favourite artist is J.M.W. Turner and it has been for quite some time. I think there's just something about his paintings that cannot really be reproduced by other people. I mean there's a lot of impressionist artists out there in that time but something about Turner's just really struck home with me and, and that chord that it struck kind of stayed with me so it's a longevity of the thing that makes it my favourite I think. Like I can see other paintings and go that's the most amazing painting I've ever seen but it won't be by my favourite artist. It'll just be by like somebody else. I mean I've got a favourite book but I don't have a favourite author. So my favourite book is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy but my favourite author isn't necessarily Douglas Adams. Poetry! Okay, so I was going to talk to you about my favourite poems and my favourite poetry and um, my favourite poem, I don't think I really have one, but I have two favourite um, poets. At the moment I really like the fad of, um, it might not be a fad, it, it's probably always been a thing, but I really like spoken word poetry. But I can't decide who my favourite poet is. I think it's probably Sarah Kay. So, there's Sarah Kay and Neil, Hill, Neil Hilborn, and they're both brilliant, they're brilliant poets at the moment. Um, and I think that Neil Hilborn is probably a little bit more relatable for me than, than Sarah Kay, but Sarah Kay tells me things that I need to hear. So it's, it's hard to know which one I like better when listening to their poems, but they all, uh, a lot of spoken word poetry, especially all of both of their poems, um, really strike chords in me, like I really listen to it and I just go, wow. But it's not, <clears throat> it's not a visual poetry, like I don't read the poems. I, I don't like reading poems as much as I love listening to them. It's the way that the mouth makes the expressions, I think, in, in the, the way that they present the poetry that really makes them. Poetry recital. <laughs> is really really boring unless it's spoken word poetry which I know seems like it's the same thing but it's really not because I've heard mum and other people read out poems that are written to be read and they just don't have that same ring to them as the poems that are written to be spoken out loud. I really like bush poetry and there's this old swagman who comes around the city sometimes and he tells uh, bush Australian native poems where he just regales these great stories and I really really enjoy that poetry too. I can't remember the man's name. So kind of like a traveling bard of the olden times except modern day. There's something about poetry that I just can't do. Like I'm really good at creating words. I know it doesn't sound like it when I speak out loud because I'm not a spoken word poet at all. I have trouble writing things down to then recount it to the story, uh, to the camera. Which is quite obvious. In fact, I do better at these blogs when I don't write down everything I'm going to say. Um, I make dot points and then I kind of pretend I know what I'm talking about at the time. Whereas these, these artists, these poets, they write down exactly what they're going to say and how they're going to say it in this great production of, of experience, I guess, of, of speaking, that just is something I'm not good at yet. I mean, I'm sure I could practice and learn and get really good at it, but one of my favourite quotes, and I do have a lot of favourite quotes, and that's that favourite things again, I don't actually have one favourite quote because I'm too busy liking them all, is by Oscar Wilde, and it says something along the lines of, she lives the poetry she cannot write, and that's really cool. I think I'm probably going to get that tattooed in my body if I can ever find some ink that I'm not allergic to. Even though you can tell it's rehearsed and they've said it over and over again, you can really feel, it's like singing a song only more powerful on the words rather than the emotiveness of the sounds of the music behind the song. It's, it's really giving power and, and empathy to the words rather than the, the melody, melody, even though they are melodic. So that's kind of hard to explain. So I think that everyone in their life has this moment, this soul-crushing moment when they 
realise that they can't do everything they want to do in their life. It, sometimes it happens in kids when they're very young and they realise they probably needed to have started a lot earlier or they should be better at piano by now if they ever want to be, I don't know, the best mu just, uh, musician in the world or they realise how hard it is to actually become an astronaut, you have to go through the military. <laughs> the moment for me was when I realised that I would never be part of the children's Qantas choir. Now I could never sing and I couldn't uh, really ever be one of the kids in what these ads, because the ads had already been made, but I would really emphasise with the kids that were standing there in the Outback Australia with their white robes singing, I still call Australia home and the jet flies over and it's really patriotic and I always thought that could be me. And then one day when I was like 13 or 14 I realised that no, actually I'm never going to be part of the children's Qantas choir, like that's just not something that can ever happen and it just really crushed me. I realised I was too old. I was too old to be part of the children's Qu Qantas choir. I still am, nothing's changed. <laughs> so I think everybody in life has that moment and I think it's the way that they react to that moment and how they deal with that, how they creatively deal with that. Like if they, if it ruins them and they go, oh I can't become an astronaut now, I'm never going to be able to do anything, I'll just settle for something else. Or there's people who go, okay, I might not become the last ballet dancer in Russia for the Tsar, but I can still do ballet and maybe I can do it to the best of my ability and maybe I can be the best in my town. Um, that's the two kinds of reactions that you can have, is that you use it proactively and you go, okay, well I realise I will never be part of the Qantas Children's Choir, but at least I can still live my life to the best of my ability. I think that's how different creative people especially, um, how they react to that initially is how well they do in life. I'm, I'm not saying that you're doomed if you react badly or not, but I think that Sarah Kay really recovered from that initial soul-crushing reality, whereas Neil Hilborn kind of didn't. So his poetry, even though he's still living his life and he's still doing so well, his poetry is so much more emotional and in-depth and kind of sad. <laughs> uh, whereas even when Sarah Hayes is sad, it's still empowering, like she still goes, yes, I can do this. Whereas Neil Hillborn's like, yeah, I can do this, you know, I can survive this. It's a slight difference and I think that's why I prefer Sarah, is because she's a little bit more optimistic. That's what shows through in, in the, her poetry anyway. Um, and maybe that's why she's my favourite, but it's like favourite colours. I'm pretty sure my favourite colour is purple, but I really like deep blue and I like greens, I like really dark colours, but at the same kind of time I kind of really like bright orange as well, like yellows. But if somebody were to ask me, hey what's your favourite colour, I would panic and probably say purple, because that's what I've been saying most of my life. Uh, so I guess maybe it's tradition now that I say that. <laughs> So favouritism is a weird thing, and I always favour one thing over the other, like I favour my drinking cup from Hogwarts. I very rarely drink water in anything else. So this is the most used cup that I own. I used to have a little blue one with my name Anna on it, that used to be the cup that I used all the time, but then I got this baby and now I don't even know where that other one is. I probably threw it out, it probably went mouldy or something, it had the big... Uh, plastic knobs <laughs> on it that just kind of probably went a bit slimy and gross after a while. So I can definitely say this is my favourite cup, even though if somebody asked me to go get my favourite cup I would panic and be like, I don't know. I would probably get uh, this one because it reminds me of the Vancouver Christmas markets. Um, and it's a mug and it's dark green and it's just really pretty. And it reminds me of an experience, so does this one actually, so maybe the favouritism comes from the experiences that we had. So another thing that I think Sarah Kay has is a respectable confidence. So I look at her and I just see the confidence that I want to have, that she can just stand up in front of hundreds and thousands of people and just recite these words that she's perfected into this story that is just amazing and the whole room reacts in the ways that she's manipulated them to through the use of her story. Not really manipulation, it's just the way that human beings react to each other when being told stories. She does it so gracefully and she's just so strong and confident and poetic. She's uh, inspiring, really. I would say she's a role model, She's aspire, I aspire to be like her. However, I never want to stand up in front of a crowd of like literally people in the room with me. 
I can't even film when I do that. I've learned how to juggle now, but when I first tried to juggle with somebody else in the room, the balls went everywhere because I was too scared. Um, uh, now I can do it because I've been practicing, so I suppose that could happen eventually, but it's not something I'm really actually looking to do, it's just something I really admire in, in her. And all poets really, and all artists, all creative people who can put forward their work in front of people while they're there. Like having an exhibition and actually having people standing there looking at your photos and your art and your drawing, it's terrifying. Um, I can put it on the internet, I can send them postcards, I can not be there at the time, that's fine, but if I have to be there and be sort of proud of my work in front of all of these people, it's really hard. I don't like attention, I guess. Uh, but that's something I admire. Okay, so as an example of the way that I can't stand here and tell you something that I've written down is that I just explained that whole Qantas Choir thing and what I wrote down is beautiful. What I wrote down is that it's the way that you recover from an initial kick in the gut feeling where you feel personally attacked by the universe for something inevitable. Which is what I meant, but it's not what I said. It's what I wrote down last night when I was thinking about things I can talk about. Or I had that hit of emotion, that, that really spontaneous idea. I wrote that down and that was perfect. And then as I came to do this speech, this video, and I just didn't... I didn't memorize it and when I do it feels like I'm reading it and I really... I don't like that transference so I had to just skim over it and then tell you what I meant. Rather than have the script written out, memorize it and then say it to you, even though that would be more poetic, <laughs> uh, more of a beautiful way to present, I think it's not for me. <laughs> I just feel really awkward and stunted and stilted because I'm not an actress. This isn't acting, this is just me communicating, I guess, and expressing, expressing ideas and any sort of creativity is just a form of expression and this is definitely a creative endeavor for me. So this is my kitchen. This is exactly where I spend a lot of my time. I prepare food here, I put it in the microwave or the oven or the sandwich press, the glorified sandwich press over there. Um, I cook a lot. I don't like to, but I have to because of the diet that I'm using, which you can find more about at Basically Paleo, but I don't really want to go into it today, I'll do a different vlog for that later. But today I really want to talk about the idea of favourites and how hard it is to make decisions to make something your favourite. It seems so concrete. How I get really attached to things and then my anxiety climbs if I have a drink of water that's not out of this cup, which is really bad. And that's not something I want to have, so I try not to have favourites as much as I can, and I'm, I'm trying to do that more. I'm trying to have more variation in things that I do. The same way that I read book after book after book, it's still just reading books, but I'm trying to vary it up. So I'm trying to read as many not just chick flick books as I can in this year as well. But I've been doing really well at that, but I really enjoy the chick flick ones because it's probably my favourite genre is, is romance and comedy, but I've been reading like mathematical essays instead because somebody recommended them to me, um, and I don't seem to back down from a challenge easily. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on probably on Thursday this week because I'm going on a cruise. I will see you on Thursday for another book review. And this is that weird how to end the video again, coffee. <laughs> I can't actually see my face, so when I'm posing like that, I actually don't know what I look like. Even though it looks like I do, maybe I am an actress. <laughs>